we arrive at school. Even though she was carrying me, Senpai isn't even out of breath, and she ran as swiftly as if she was sprinting by herself. Tonakun, can you walk? Barely. We're going to kill Roa, so we can't go in like this. That's true. And please walk on your own from, uh, from here. Senpai lowers me to the ground. The school is eerily quiet. Once we, uh, when, well, once we go inside, all that's left is to fight to the death. Stop shifting. I take off my glasses after a deep breath. My head starts to pound. In addition to not being able to move myself fully, I feel really sick. This isn't good. Senpai looks up the night sky with a serious expression. A full moon. The radiant moonlight illuminates the school ground. What isn't good? Yes. <clears throat> the true ancestors are said to be originally from the moon, so they gained much strength from the moon. This is the same for Roa, as a dead apostle under the true ancestors, so he is practically immortal tonight. With my current equipment, I may not be able to fully kill him. Just leave that to us. She grits her teeth. Practically immortal? But that doesn't mean, uh, mean a thing to me. If I can get close, even if in the next instant I'll be stabbed in the chest once more, if I can get close, I can pierce his death. It's very bright tonight. It will be difficult to, uh, to conceal ourselves in darkness. I'm rather fond of moonlit nights, but it's a little different tonight. Senpai sighs. Yeah, I see you how a bunch of, bunch of murder is about to go down. Don't blame me for uh, feeling a bit weird about it. The pale, shining moonlight and the frigid night air. I can even see the lines of death growing. Really? I don't like moonlit lights. Tonokun? Creak. My brain creaks. That's not good. Rather than in sunshine, I can unpleasantly see everything clearly in the weak moonlight. I like the strong sunshine that erases everything, or real darkness. Creak. Not pain. My brain does actually start creaking. Ah! Man. Seems like I'll go especially crazy tonight. Everything seems to die easily. It's like I'm in the deserts of the moon. But with this, there's no way I'll miss Roa's death either. I put my glasses back on. Gripping my knife, I walk towards the school building. I pass through the front entrance. Even walking normally is difficult. The distance to the school building seems incredibly long. Tanakun, we'll split up here. Senpai says this suddenly. From here on, please go ahead by yourself. <coughs> I will be do uh, I will be doing something else. Something else. Senpai, you're going to do something? <laughs> What's rude? <coughs> um. Yeah. No. I'm good. Just got slightly lightheaded after coughing. Uh. Now look. Even my goal is to deal with Roa. Seems this Roa is stronger than his previous host, so I can't face him directly. When you and Arkwood are killed by Roa, I will use that opening to dispose of him. Thanks for the vote of confidence! Great! Yeah! Yeah, lovely! Yeah, when we're killed, yeah, okay. She says this directly with a serious expression. <laughs> you really seem serious, senpai. Yes. 
That was the last time I'm letting personal circumstance enter my work. You're fighting for her, aren't you, Tonokun? Like that, I also have my reasons. So from now on, I cannot help you. Oh. Yeah, thanks, Senpai. This just might be goodbye. Let me say I liked you, Senpai. It was fun spending time with you and Arihiko talking about stupid things. Yes, it was like a dream for me, too. Senpai disappears towards the building like a black shadow. Well, time to go. I push my body, which hurts every time I move, and I run into the school building. The school building is full of cracks. As if a small typhoon was loose inside, and they shift higher and higher. It seems the fight between Arkwood and Roa already began. Upstairs. I spit this out as I dash up the stairs. I gasp for air. I make it to the fourth floor. The cracks running through the walls continue down the hallway into the passageway which connects the uh, connects the two buildings. Damn it! Somehow managed to move my wavering legs and run towards the connecting passageway. through the hallway and reaches intersection with that uh, passageway. That's the last stop. In the middle of the passageway, two figures are glaring at each other from a distance. Shiki stands at the end of the passageway, reaching to the nearby building wide open. In the very center, Arkwood is kneeling on the floor, breathing hard. Arkwood! I start to dash towards her. Before then, Arkwood, still kneeling, looks up at me intensely. Hmm? I can't move? The instant her eyes fix it on me, my body, as if it became stone, doesn't move at all. How awful, binding your friend with your mystic eyes like that. It's been okay for you to let him die with you. <laughs> Shiki. No, Roa laughs amusedly. Mr. Guys, why? Why is Arkwood using this on me? Finally. Even though I finally made it here on time. Why? Why, Arkwood? Arkwood looks away from me and directs her gaze at Roa. She doesn't say anything. She doesn't say anything to me. She only glares at the enemy in front of her as she breathes painfully. Why? Why? I can't even shout. Not because of her mystic eyes, but I finally made it here. Cursing my ineffectiveness, my body which I forced for so long starts to lose its heat. Roa laughs loudly as he watches the two of us. I see. You're finally prepared, princess. Roa leisurely walks over to Arkwood. Arkwood remains kneeled, unmoving. My, my, you're pretty good, Shiki. It seems the princess here is going to fight me to save you. If it was a former princess, you would be terrifying. But you're now just a regular vampire. You don't even have the power of a true ancestor anymore. Jeez, it would have been better if, you, if only you felt your desires. Quiet. Arkwood's voice echoes through the hallway. What is this? If it's not a hallucination, everything around Arkwood starts to waver. What? Rowa stops walking forward. Marble Phantasm? can still use that. As to be expected from the royalty of the true ancestors. Roa retreats fearfully. However, you cannot win against me. Because I have something you lack. Arkwood stops breathing. 
as if ceasing all movement in order to gather up all her strength. You know, don't you? Right, it is the experience of death. I know what death is, but you do not. That is our difference. Well, as long as something is alive, it cannot experience death. The only one who knows is probably only an infinite reincarnator like me. The wavering of everything around Arkwick grows stronger. are instinctually afraid of the unknown. This does not change, even for transcendent races like the true ancestors. No matter how much of the occult you study, no matter how long-lived you are, you cannot experience death. You will gain so much power by resisting death, but at the same time, it is the source of your weakness. You run away from death, whereas I accept it. That is the difference in nature between you Awkward Brunstein die, Michael Roa Veldmion. Even now, I live as a human in this age. An out of place ghost like yourself has no right to judge me. Crack. The glass along the passageway starts to break. I know about death, about the darkness. The nothingness which I have journeyed through so many times. To me, death is little more than a common ritual. Let's say you destroy this body right here. I'll still remain in this world. Why don't you understand it's useless to fight me? <clears throat> Roa, sp Roa spreads his arm higher. <laughs> Arkwood doesn't answer. All right. If you still insist on challenging me, I will not stop you. Your resistance will be rewarded. Roa lowers his arms and crouches. Everything around Arkwood seems to burst apart any minute now. Ah. I can't speak. This isn't good. My brain screams to me. I shouldn't let this happen. I don't know why. I don't even have proof. Just I, someone who has seen lots of death, can tell. Roa and Arkwood. Which one of them is closer to death? <laughs> St uh -huh. I can't speak. I can't. Crack. The sound of the air ripping itself apart. Of, or of the air itself ripping apart. The warping of Arkwood's surroundings propagates along the entire passageway. The entire hallway pulses. The glass windows, the walls, the hallway, the whole building. They become roiling waves as if, as if they were a shredder with tens, hundreds, thousands, no, a countless number of blades. <laughs> right. Marble Phantasm, Blades. Got it. Yeah. I could almost call it uh, Unlimited Blade Works, right? <coughs> yeah. In a single instant, Roa's body disappears. Distorted, sliced, compressed. All that remains are his ankles. sliding of the hallway ceases. Maybe it only lasted a moment. The passageway is like it was before. Only all that's left are Roa's ankles. But it didn't end there. Ah. The ankles start to move. They start to run towards Arkwood. As they do, with each step, a leg, his hips, his other leg, his torso, his arms sprout to life. Arkwood is still kneeling, not moving. 
Directly in front of her, Roa's neck and head come back into being. Ah! Couldn't warn her in time. The completely regenerated Roa slices through her stomach. Like cutting cleanly through the line with no slicing of flesh, no flowing of blood. That was close. I knew it was correct to choose tonight. If the moon was waning, even the slightest bit, I could not have regenerated from just an ankle. And Princess, you cannot regenerate from that wound. My claws have the same ability as that man over there. Thud. Arkwood collapses to the floor. This is the- oh. I see. This is the power I got from experiencing death. Yeah, I know. I, I, it, 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 it said that. I, I know. Ironically, I did not know how to use this myself. But he taught me. For someone who has seen death, perceiving its form was not difficult. Roa boasts as he kicks Arkwood. Her body tumbles towards me. Arkwood! I can move again. It's because the power behind her mystic eyes has vanished. It means her power is no longer working. Damn! Shaking the thought from my mind, I hold her close. A chill runs through me the instant I hold her. Her body is terribly cold. The only heat left within her is like a candle about to go out. Roa still stands before us. But I don't care about that. Right now, I just want to help Arkwit. Arkwit! Call out to her. Her closed eyes open energetically as if waking from a dream. Ha! <laughs> That was very lame, wasn't it? With patchwork brightness, Arkwood puts forth a strange smile. You... What kind of stupid things are you saying? Why... Why did... Can't speak clearly. I wanted to say something more. Something better. But my brain doesn't work. I can't be calm now. As I hold her... The lack of lingering warmth in her body tells me it's hopeless. I took off my glasses. There's no doubt I would see something even more hopeless. More than anything. More than anything else. I don't want to see that. Why? 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 That's all I can manage to say. Exasperated at myself, I hold her tightly. There's no embrace in response. She doesn't have any strength left in her. All she does is smile happily. No! This can't be happening. Why? I did... Why did you do it all by yourself? We're partners! We said we'd help each other. To the very end. Yeah. That's right, yeah. I kind of forgot. How can you forget? This... This makes me useless. I said I would help you. I said I would definitely help you, but I couldn't even help one bit. No. That's not it at all, Shiki. You've helped me more than enough. That's why... It's enough already. <coughs> she coughs up blood and smiles painfully. So I wanted to thank you. In the end, I'm glad I was able to protect you from Roa. I gasp. Arquid's glazed over eyes don't see anything. Not, not her wound, or even Roa who still lives. Her time. Since attacking a while ago ended right then. Uh, yeah. Thanks. 
Thanks. Can't. Can't even lie properly. Light in her eyes is fading. Her body warmth is rapidly approaching zero. I'm going to lose. Am I going to lose her like this? Arquid. Y yes Drink my blood. If you do that, you'll get your power back. Not even thinking, I scream that out. She doesn't answer. But slightly, she shakes her head. Why? Don't tell me you're still scared. Look, you said it before, right? You asked, what if birds of fish the same amount of intelligence? Could I eat them? I would. If it meant I would live, I would. Isn't stealing things from others to live a natural law of the world? That's what she said herself back then. So why? Why does she just shake her head with those pitiful eyes? I don't like talking about what, uh, what ifs. Uh, oh, I don't like talking about what ifs. A denial. But that was my line back then. What she said before. She likes playing what if. Because it feels like there's hope. Really? I li I like what ifs. Even if it is sugarcoating things. I feel there's always some hope. Isn't there? But I can't finish. My throat is just so tight. I can't speak properly. It's true. Right now, there's something else I want more. The wavering voice, I ask her what it is. Yeah. I, I want you to kiss me, Shiki. What? Bite the inside of your cheek and bleed. <laughs> For force the blood down her throat if you have to. Such a simple thing. Is that alright? I press my lips to hers. It isn't sweet like before or gentle. Just a kiss where I press my lips against her cold lips without any warmth. Also, I'm gonna make sure I get a screenshot of this before it goes away. After that, she smiles as if extremely happy. I always wanted to do something like that. Oh? You really like strange things? Yes, but I'm still happy. Just that it felt so good. I've lived for so long, but I've never been this happy like I am now. So... I kind of thought to myself, maybe disappearing like this might be good. After murmuring such a thing, all warmth disappears from her body. Arquid? There's no response. Even though her body is still here, even though her body is still this soft, even though I still remember the sound of her voice in my ears, never again. None of this will ever happen again. Ah. Uh, what have I been doing? I wanted to make her happy. I wanted to teach her so many things. I wanted to take her to so many places. I wanted to be with her forever. But it can never happen. She's done it. No matter how you look at it, there's nothing more. Suddenly, before I could say the right thing, she went off and passed away by herself. For my entire life, I won't be able to forget this. This death. This maddening calmness. <coughs> I'll never forget it. Tap. I hear the footsteps of the man who was watching it all. Finished, Shiki. Yeah, it's finished. Answering, 
I turn towards my enemy. We face each other in the moonlit hallway. <clears throat> Roa doesn't move from the spot where Awkward was before. He was watching everything silently. Probably because he knew he was in a dominant position. I didn't think you were still alive. Roa says this casually as if nothing has happened. I take off my glasses and ready my knife. Seems those who can see death are good at escaping death. Isn't it a matter it isn't a matter of the strength or weakness of your life. However, normally people call that are uh, who's talking? Everyone who We've already died one I don't know who's talking. Okay, no, it's okay. First it's Roa, then him, then Roa, okay. It seems those who can see death are good at escaping death. It isn't a matter of strength or weakness of your life. However, normally people call that useless effort. You're one to talk. You and I. You've already died once. Exactly, Roa says as she smiles. Those returning from the dead can understand death. You and I are special cases of that kind. I have experienced death 17 times before I got to this. But you've only done it once. Honestly, it must be the difference in our latent ability. I am really curious what kind of ability it would have, it would have been if I had reincarnated in your body. A bothersome, overly composed voice. Just hearing it makes my head hurt. I have two things to ask you, and one thing to tell you. Man, I just say this when my head fills with pain. Oh, all right, go ahead. Probably because he's so absolutely confident in his dominating position, Roa responds amusedly. The first question is the most important. You, why did you kill Arquid? Why? She was trying to kill me, so wasn't it natural to kill her back? Well. The one I desired wasn't this weak princess who came here. My current self could have taken apart the princess where she lived. But there's no part, uh, no point in taking in a true ancestor no different from a regular vampire. So I figured there was no value in taking her in, and decided to settle it. Even I'm disappointed with the way things have turned out. K -k Twisting his lips, the enemy laughs. My head hurts. Hurry. I have to kill him as fast as possible. I can't stand him existing a single second longer. Well, well, what do you plan on doing now? Don't tell me you think you can fight don't tell uh don't tell me you can think you can fight me in your condition. Resisting is useless, Shiki. I know that more than anyone else. Business causes me to, to collapse to my knees. But still, even if I don't have any power left to even stand, I gaze at him. Enough, enough. Even if you see my death, if you can't touch me, it's meaningless. You know, Shiki, I'm rating your ability rather highly. Yes. It seems Shiki's personality is fading away. Since he has avenged you, uh, I'm more Roa than Shiki now. Well, it doesn't really matter. Roa takes another step forward. Isn't this power wonderful, Shiki? You should be happy. We're probably the only ones who possess the mystic eyes of death perception in the entire world. It would be a shame to lose such a rare ability. And more than anything else, we're the same entity. We can understand each other more than anyone else. There's no other partner who would assure me as you. Are you trying to tell me to be your partner? 
no, I'm not asking. I'm letting. I don't care about what you want. That would only get in the way. You can relax. After I drink your blood and plunder even your soul, I'll make you into an existence where you won't hesitate to use your power. The gritting of my teeth. Hmm. I see. Then the next question. What you see, are they lines or points? No, I'll make it simpler. You can only see it on living things, right? You can't possibly see it on anything else. Mm hmm. Of course, non-living things don't have any life. Only living things have this place indicating the source of life. Thought so. I understand it completely, vampire. I grip my knife. The headache completely governs the inside of my brain, and all I can see is one thing. You're not really- you're not being clear. Those aren't really fitting final words, but enough talk. There's also the hiding woman from the church I have to deal with. You're lucky, Shiki. Once I make you my subordinate, your first opponent will be that woman you trust. Rawa approaches. My wavering vision isn't fixated on his figure. But you and I see are totally different, Shiki. In the back of my head, a switch turns on. All you're seeing is life. You don't understand death at all. That's why you can't kill me. And you're only able to kill a weakened woman. My brain reaches a white heat. What? If you could see death, you couldn't maintain your sanity. All you can perceive is the part which keeps things alive. If you could see death, you couldn't even manage to stand. To give an example, it's the world on the moon. Everything is like a desolate wasteland. The seam of death on everything I see. Events of the world which disappear when I touch them. What are you? Being able to see the death of things means you're forced to see the world's uncertainty and fragility. The ground is like it's not there, and the sky seems about to fall at any moment. What are... what are you talking about? Roa's voice falters. Of course. Because he can't even understand the slightest bit of what I'm saying. In other words, his eyes and mine may be similar. But they're completely different things. Stop it. Those eyes. Don't look at me with those eyes. Fear mixes into Rawa's voice. He even said it himself. Humans are instinctually afraid of the unknown. You don't know the of the illusion that the whole world could perish in an instant. That is what it means to see death. These eyes, this power isn't something you can boast about like you did. Yeah, back then, I was even scared of walking. Even I would. If I hadn't met that person, I would have long since, long since been, ins been insane. That's your mistake, vampire. Life and death may be back to back, but they will never face each other. I'm telling you, don't look at me with those eyes! The sound of running footsteps. But I'm many times faster. I'll show you. This is what it means to kill something. Saying that, I thrust through the hallway's point on the floor. Instantaneously, the lines racing through the passageway undulate. What? Even the sound of Roa's screaming voice is buried amidst the crashing rubble. The passageway is literally killed. The blocks which lost their meaning break apart and crumble away. 
Varroa. It must have been a total surprise attack. Pulled down by the destruction of the hallway and the collapsing rubble, Varroa falls to the earth. In front of my very eyes, the passageway crumbles away. Enduring the pain in my head and burning in my body, I head to the stairs. I head past Arquid's corpse and hurry to the courtyard. Under the moonlight, the courtyard under the passageway has become a sea of rubble. In its center, something moves. It really is sly when dealing with death. I pull my almost collapsing body towards it. He's really something. The lower half of Roa's body is almost completely gone. Yet coming out from underneath the rubble, the upper half of his body still moves, ignoring that fact. This amount of life may, be al may almost be something worthy of respect. What was that? Quivering, Roa wonders aloud. Walking on top of the rubble, I move directly in front of him. Shiki. Roa lifts his head to look at me. His eyes seem to practically ooze with hatred. You monster! His, his voice equally full of indignant hatred. Who is? Replying, I stand in front of him. Roa's death is just a little right of his heart. I lightly thrust my knife forward. A sensation like piercing paper. That feeling is indeed death. Ah. Roa gives a small scream. He's someone who's experienced death. He should know this feeling really well. You're not scared, are you? It's a path you're quite familiar with. There's a difference. It's only one thing. This time, you can't come back. I wonder how Shiki knows it's killing the soul rather than just killing that body. May, can, like, can he feel the difference? I pull out my knife and turn away from Roa. Roa isn't dead yet. Like Arquid. Someone as long lived as him will linger just a little longer. I breathe weakly. My mind wavers. If my body's at its limits, then my head is past its limits. Arquid said even even said back then, I shouldn't force myself to look at the death of non living things. If I do it too much, the blood vessels in my brain will burn away. I don't care about that. It would have been alright. Even if I turned myself into a vegetable, it would have been worth it to stop Roa sooner. That way, you wouldn't have had to have... <clears throat> I collapse. I fall on the ground. My ankles are in pain. I turn around and see. The upper half of Roa's body was crawled this far. You. You. With bloodshot eyes, he makes his way into my collapsed body. Fading. Disappearing. I'm disappe- His bloody arms wrap around my neck. CL? Senpai? Where you at? Why? Why I disappear? How did you- Kill me, 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 me! Opening his saw-like mouth, Muhi moves to bite my neck. I won't disappear. You and I are connected, you see. Y you transfer my existence. Links cannot be cut. His teeth dig into my neck. Ah. He vanishes. Roa's body falls apart in a single instant.
Yes. With this, it means I'm the one who killed him. Senpai says this sword in hand and breathing happily. <laughs> eh? <laughs> I don't quite understand. I'm saying I'm the one who killed Roa. No matter who your opponent is, you should not kill humans. You are not someone who should come to my world. So I'm the one who killed him. Senpai says this haughtily as she places her hands on her hips. Hey, senpai. That's just sugar sugarcoating it. Maybe it is. But it is a kind lie, so isn't it okay? <clears throat> even if it is even if it is hypocrisy, doesn't that allow room for hope somehow? I guess. Those words are similar. I told her not to talk about what ifs. She answered with something like that. Yeah, that's right. Somehow. Somewhere, if there's hope, then. How happy can that be? That ri isn't really important, is it? Uh, that, but that isn't really important, is it? Are you okay, Totokun? Were you bitten? Senpai rushes quickly to care for me. My consciousness fades away. I don't want to move anymore, and my brain wants to rest. I mean, you deserve it, man. Kun sh- uh, huh? Kun shiki hey! Farther and farther away. Eyes still open. With the glass-like moon overhead, my consciousness completely ceases. As it happens, I think to myself how it seems just like a television being switched off. Ha! Huh? Sukhime and epilogue. What? <clears throat> Shiki- <clears throat> Shiki-sama, it is morning. Please wake up. So we're not dead. I hear a familiar voice. Shiki-sama, please wake up. If you are late like yesterday, you will break your promise with Akiya-sama. A voice partly tense, partly relaxed. Shiki-sama, is it okay? Akiya-sama will end up scolding you again. No, it's not okay at all. I'm up. I'm up, so hold on. Still under the sheets, I respond as I slowly open my eyes. Um... Good morning, Shiki-sama. Ah, morning. I give a sleepy greeting in response and put on my glasses. It's past seven in the morning. He sweet came at her usual time and managed to wake me. I will prepare your breakfast. Really, really, really? After changing, he head towards the, di uh, the dining room. Sweet disappears from the room after a bow. What is happening? I give a big yawn. After a nice stretch, I get up from bed. I change into my school uniform and cast a glance at my desk. On top is the knife I will not ever use again. Okay, so we were saved. The curtains sway in the wind. Isui must have opened the window. The sky is refreshingly clear. It's just a little cold, though. I approach the window to close it. As it turned out, I ended up waking in my own room. 
Seems Senpai carried me here. Fortunately, Akiha and the others didn't know I left. It's been one week since that night. Tonoshiki's life hasn't changed a bit from what it was before. My relationship with Akiha is a bit uneasy at times, but of course her brother and sister. Except for that passageway being repaired, the school hasn't changed at all. No, it did change. At school, there's no senpai called CL anywhere, nor does anyone remember her. The instances of serial murders haven't occurred once since then. Since there's been no official arrest, the city streets are still relatively empty at night, but it'll probably return to normal in a month. As for me, I carry an unfillable void in my heart, but I continue on as I did before. Or rather, I can bear it all. At times I get overwhelmed when I'm assailed by memories, but I don't think I'll go insane for or anything for now. Someday, will I, get cra will I go crazy after not being able to bear these memories? Or will I just return to living normally after getting used to them? Perhaps it's about a 50-50 chance. But until then, even if it is a little girlish, I keep the final promise I made with her every day. Autumn is drawing to a close, isn't it? The blue sky outside is enough to take my breath away. Taking a large, deep breath, I shut the window. Classes end and the classroom empties, but I won't leave until the sun sets completely. The red classroom. Burning sunset spreads outside the window. The sun flushes red as it sinks deep in the sky. I'll always be waiting here. I'll remember my unforgettable promise. I'll continue waiting here forever. There's still one pro uh, promise I haven't been able to fulfill. When this is all over, when we're done defeating this vampire, before we part, can't we do something like this just once more? Back then, she tilted her head, her head to the side in confusion. So, I really was wondering, what would happen if we were to meet again without any responsibilities? If we just met for no particular reason? When I said those words, I was only thinking about her. If you're too busy, then it's okay. I only thought of it just now anyway. Just... Not as two people cooperating, but as two friends who got along, not doing anything in particular. If we could create some normal memories like that, I knew she'd be happy. Okay. When everything's over, let's come here again, Shiki. It won't have any meaning, but I'm sure it'll be really, really fun. Oh, it was her talk. Yeah, it was her line still. After her eyes widened in surprise, she nodded. Or maybe not. In the classroom bathed by the sunset, Arkwood smiled and made that promise with me. I remember that promise. I remember that smile. I remember everything. I can't forget. I won't forget. I'll always, always remember the promise we made in the room ablaze with the sunset to meet here again. The sun sinks further. Three hours until the vermilion fades completely. The quiet time until the crimson sky disappears. This eternal fleeting instant of a world standing still. Maybe I'm already crazy. Even though I'm waiting for someone who will never come, my heart is horribly calm. Clatter. The sound of something touching a desk. I look. The window is open. I realize that, painted in red sunlight, she's standing by the window. Yes. Cause she didn't disappear. I, 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 she didn't, she didn't disappear. So I, or turn into ash, I should say. 
So I knew there was a chance she'd be alive and probably just recuperating. She doesn't move at all, but she's there. She's right in front of me. She's not an illusion. But I feel like there's a distance which can never be spanned between us. Don't, don't type, don't, but don't put sigh. No, 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 no. I can't speak. But I feel so terribly calm now. Jeez. I really was, uh, jeez, I really was planning to disappear, Shiki. You just wait forever. I couldn't just leave you alone like that, so I came here. She smiles bashfully. Well, you know. I did say I was never going to pr uh, break a promise with you again. That's true. Thanks for keeping that promise. But I'm sorry. It seems that this time... Uh, it seems this time that I'm the one who will be able to keep it. Why? I'm surprised myself. I ask you this in a truly gentle voice. Without any anger at all. Yeah, I never did tell you my reason for pursuing Roa. Actually, a long time ago. I see. I see. I once drank human blood. At that time, the humans stole some of my powers and became an incredibly strong dead apostle. In the end, I ended up killing all the other true ancestors except for me. And that means... You mean Roa? Yes. Until that time, I never knew about the vampiric impulse. <clears throat> the other true ancestors also believed they didn't have it. But it was too late. Until then, I didn't even know I was a vampire. So, I didn't even know it was something I shouldn't do. I see. Never having been taught anything extra. She wasn't even taught she was the same as those she killed. Because of, because of, a, of just one mistake, I destroyed everyone. So I won't drink human blood again. But a true ancestor that has drank blood once cannot remain sane without doing it again. But you've been good for 800 years. I can only be here because you completely killed Roa. Even though I annihilated him so many times, it was only his flesh, not his soul. But you killed his existence completely, Shiki. So, <clears throat> the power he stole returned to me and I somehow managed to revive. That doesn't... That's all I can do. I can no longer resist the vampiric impulse inside of me. So, that doesn't matter. Shiki, I can't see you again. Sorry for breaking our promise. Doesn't matter to me. I just want you to be, to be by my side, that's all. You can't keep your promise. Shiki? Drink my blood. If you do, you can keep your promise. Time passes by. Neither of us says anything. And after a truly maddening silence. I see. I can't. I don't need your blood, Shiki. Why? Is my blood not good? Do you have a reason for not drinking it? <laughs> she nods. I like you, so I won't. She smiles like a flower blooming triumphantly. I suck in a large amount of air. Just try to suppress this feeling. I want to stop her. 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 Even if I have to kill her, I want to stop her. But her smile is just too gorgeous. Can't selfishly bring myself to ruin it. 
goodbye. I really am grateful for everything, Shiki. My throat trembles and no sound comes out. But still, I have to say goodbye. I'm a liar. Hi. You kept your promise, Shiki. Just a worthless liar. I said I would make you happy. Yes, I vowed to. No, not at all. I will sleep from now on. I will always be dreaming of you. <clears throat> I enjoyed our time together so much. I will always be dreaming about it. It won't have any meaning, but I'm sure it will be really, really fun. So, Shiki, I really am happy. You really did make me happy. Damn! My throat is filled up. I don't... I don't want such a... You really are kind, Shiki. Yeah. I knew coming here to say goodbye was a good thing. I love you, Shiki. Your honesty. How you're always spaced out. How I'm the only one you yell at. How you always look forward to the future. I love all of you. <clears throat> so please... Keep living like that, okay? For just an instant, she smiles sadly. She waves her hand, and as, and as if fading into the sunset itself, she disappears before my very eyes. I grit my teeth trying to hold it in. She was smiling until the very end, so at least I didn't want to cry. The classroom is empty. I see. You really did keep your promise. In this classroom. I promised to meet again in the classroom as the sun set. She definitely kept it. There are some things I lost, but it's now over. The curtain has fallen cleanly over the time I knew her. The time I ran through with her. Come to think of it, a farewell is always there. In our case, our farewell was only early. Think of it that uh, think of it that way. This was a really satisfying farewell. She was still alive and she told me she's still happy. No! Not like this. This isn't what I wanted. Right. More. I wanted to be with her more. I wanted to talk with her more. I wanted to feel the warmth of her body more. More. I wanted to see her smile more. Always. Not like this, but always. I wanted to make her happy. But she... Smiling to the end, she left me behind. Telling me to live. Stupid idiot! That was her final wish. With a smile. She told me no matter how hard it is. Even if I have to deceive myself right now. Until I can finally see it all as simply as a memory. To keep looking forward to the future and live. Tch. There's no way I can do that. I... I don't have the slightest confidence to live like that. Still. So that she can see a happy dream. I have to at least grant her wish. Ah. I realize the sun has long since sank. The crimson sky is painted over in a dark blue. The dark night sky. The spiral wisps of clouds and the bright white moon. They're all that's left. But an extremely beautiful memory. <sighs> I exhale slowly as if praying. She may no longer be here. But I have to say what I forgot to say earlier. Goodbye. I had a lot of fun too. It's extremely late words of farewell echo through the classroom. Only the glass-like moon hangs in the night sky. The distant blue moon, <laughs> looking as if it would shatter if, it if touched. For a long time, 
Until dawn, I keep looking up at it. His teacher's gonna be pissed he was there all night. <coughs> uh, Finn. Yeah, it's a downer, but at the same time... Unsatisfactory, if I'm going to be. Honest, I don't know. Like. things where it's like it just it, it feel yeah. like you you know have you you get you, you, you feelings but you don't want you don't really understand it's like it's like that I just feel dissat well not dis just unsatisfied with it I can't really explain why though like I guess the closest thing I can say that no, I don't, I don't even know. Like... I guess the best way to put it is it, it, it just feels incomplete almost. No, not that, that isn't. It's, it's more than that. Um, not quite. Not incomplete per se, but. Less, I don't know, it's it's an end you can almost tell. That this is someone's like. Like, uh, someone's early work, you know? Like, it, 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 it just, I don't know. It, it feels like there could have been more to it. I don't know. It's so hard to, like, it's 
because like I'm not a story writer, so it's it's like really it's hard to me for me to like really critique heavily. It's just like I don't know. It's hard to put the feeling into the, the or the yeah. You know, anyway, yeah. Uh, see else says lessons. Sure. You have reached Arkwood's true ending. Well done. <clears throat> Each heroine, with one exception, has two different kinds of endings. A true ending and a good ending. After reaching one of the endings, please go back a little and uh, re-advance to the story. A different event should await you. Uh, well then. Uh, thank you very much for playing up to this point. <coughs> Let's meet again somewhere in Tsukihime. far back do I have to go for the good ending? Because I want to do it now. So I get it all out of the way. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, but I'd have to go back to the save I started at and click all the way through. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> oh, yeah, you know, you're right. Yeah, there, no, there is that option. I forgot because I, I never used it. That's right. Uh... It's gonna be really. This is literally should be me waiting to get to that point. I have nothing to say. I can already tell what's coming though. The true ending. Like. In UBW. Is shit. <laughs> and the good ending is the good one. <laughs> Cause I mean, it says good ending, so I mean, I feel like there's, you know, it's only, if the good ending isn't good in the way I'm hoping it's good. Wow. Ah, <sighs> well then. So fate extra tomorrow, uh... Yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun. <coughs> I also gotta play more Pokemon Legends, because I, yeah, I still gotta continue that. <laughs> I think I mentioned it yesterday, but yeah, I got the, the patch, so like, certain translation stuff is fixed, and I have battle chatter, subtitles. Uh, I also gotta record more of today's menu for the Emmy family because I watched the first five episodes in one sitting and then I haven't watched more of it yet, so I have to do that. 
Piper. Released episode four of it yesterday. Ep yeah, episode five. I don't know when I'll be done with episode five because I st I still have to finish doing the Konosuba movie because that's taking a while to edit. <laughs> I want to get that out soon <laughs> so it's out of the way because because I've ha I've had a record I've had the Konosuba movie recorded for f like five months <laughs> and I've just been slowly doing a little bit uh, like a little bit more and. <laughs> and getting there we're getting there and yeah i don't know if i want to do because i still for some reason have no desire to watch zero i don't know why so i wasn't gonna do carnival phantasm after zero but i kind of want to do carnival phantasm like after i'm done with emya family yeah i, I don't know Okay, okay. We're here, we're here. All right, YouTube. Because I'm gonna be cutting all that bit out of me, skipping through all that. We're at the choice during the epilogue, which you just saw. So, <clears throat> we're... Which... Why am I, why am I, why am I, why, I don't, I, okay, yeah, cause, yeah, cause he says, yeah, he, he's like, yeah, I keep my promise, and then, wait, okay, yeah. So I will never forget our quid. I start walking from the mansion atop the hill towards school. Like any other day, the morning is wrapped in tranquility. Autumn's almost over and winter's close by. Perhaps when this vague season in between the heat of summer and the chill of winter changes, maybe this transparent feeling will also change. I see more figures of students in uniforms the closer I get to school. Today is Saturday, so most of them are smiling as they walk along the road. Once I pass this intersection, I reach the front gate. It will soon be a month since I came back to uh, the Tono Mansion. I've already become well used to this route by now. The traffic light turns red and I stand in front of the crosswalk. Every time I stop here, I remember that one time where you were chased by a crazy vampire lady. At this intersection, Arkwood was waiting for Tono Shiki back then as she sat on the guardrail, just like she's doing now. <coughs> well, huh? Eh? <laughs> I say without even thinking. Between the cars rushing by, a scene unfolds just like before. What? She's there. Dressed in white with golden hair down to her shoulders. Long, slender eyebrows over crimson eyes. A figure I can never mistake for anyone else, no matter what. This figure that has already vanished long ago. The light turns green. The students around me start moving. In the midst of it. I'm the only one who stands still, and she's the only one who notices I'm here. She has her typical smile as she crosses the intersection. <laughs> why, why the happy music? <laughs> I can't speak. I'm so overwhelmed with emotion, I don't even know what to do. Even if this is just some sort of bad illusion, I'm so happy just to see her again, I could cry. Hello. Are you heading to school, student son? I can't believe it. 
The illusion even has her voice down perfectly. Shiki. Hey, why are you so quiet? Don't tell me you forgot about me. Those red eyes looking up at me. There's no way I could forget. But at the same time, there's no way she can be here alive. Yes, there can. I can't speak. She wrinkles her eyebrows together and glares at me like an angry cat. Jeez, what gives? I put up with not going to see you and was waiting here so long. Don't tell me you're angry, Shiki. I just can't believe it. This isn't an illusion in front of me. It really is. Art Quid. Yes, it's me. Thank goodness. I thought you became a vegetable after fighting Roa. I really was worried, you know. <coughs> Wait a minute. Um, I'm so confused, what do I say? should I be happy about? Is there something I need to do? I really am just so overwhelmed, I don't know. <coughs> Shiki. Hey, you're acting funny. Your mouth is wide open and so are your eyes. Well, it's kind of interesting for me, so I'll keep watching. <laughs> okay? Quit. That's what I mean. <coughs> Jeez, you just keep saying my name. We finally managed to meet again, so can't you find anything more fitting to say? <laughs> yeah, there's no mistake. There's only one person who could say such ridiculous things. Why? Hmm? I can't hear you. Please say it a little louder. She tells me, come on, come on, as she points her ear closer to me. Why are you still alive? Okay, saying that with a bunch of students around. Let's hope everyone went inside already. I scream in the moon voice my feelings as loud as I can. Ow! Not so loud, Cheeky! You don't say not so loud! Why are you alive? <laughs> I... I thought you were gone, that I would never see you, that I would always... Regret it. But why? Cheerfully as if we only said goodbye yesterday. How could you greet me so simply? Oh, I see. I never did tell you, Shiki. Arkwood drops a fist to her other hand in realization. Yeah, I never did tell you my, my reason for pursuing Roa. He stole some of my power. In order to take it back, I pursued him. But you completely destroyed him, right? And the power that was freed from Roa returned to me, and I managed to come back to life. You, you never told me about that! <coughs> no, I didn't. It didn't really concern you. You... You waited... Anyway, I revived. But I could barely resist the vampiric impulse inside of me. I probably would have done something terrible if I went to see you. So I slept until I regained my power. Because of that, I was able to re return to normal. But it took seven days to suppress my impulse. Eh? Then... Then you're really okay now, Arkwood? Of course. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be here. She flashes me a full smile. Arkwood takes my hand. You know, Shiki, while I was asleep, I was really looking forward to meeting again like this. What? What possibly changes? Where she, which, what? Because once I did, you go around and do so many things. I was thinking it'd be nice to get be uh to get better, even just a little quicker. Arkwood looks at me with a pure, unadulterated smile. I'm speechless. Not in a bad way, I'm just so happy. Being able to see her smile again. All the things we can do from now on. How I told Senpai that my wish was never to leave Arkwood alone again. Not one, not one of them was lost. There's so many things I want to say and tell her right now. Right now, just speak honestly from the heart. 
welcome back. I've been waiting for a long time. I squeeze her hand in return and briefly tell her just that. She looks a little bewildered at first. Yeah. Saying that, she looks away in embarrassment. Margaret? I call out to her. After a brief pause, she faces me with a full smile. Yes, I'm back. I'm glad you were still yourself, Shiki. My chest tightens. If this wasn't right on the way to school, I would embrace and kiss her. Fuck it, do it anyway. Her smile is just so adorable. Alright, let's go, Shiki. You're going to take me to many places, right? Arkwood releases my hand and jumps like a rabbit. She's so radiant, I can barely look at her directly. But, um, where? Anywhere. Somewhere you think it's fun, Shiki. Smiling. Arkwood replies like it's nothing. But that's a little troubling. Um, you know, I do have school. Hey, can't you at least spend a day with me today? We've already skipped so much for you! <laughs> but yeah, why not? Arkwood looks dissatisfied. Uh, evidently, I'm extremely weak against that face of hers. Well, even if I went to school like this, I wouldn't be able to concentrate there. And more than anything else, I want to be with Arkwood. Hmm, you're right. Who cares about boring reputation? Okay, Arkwood. I'll indulge your selfishness for the day, my princess. <laughs> Yay! <coughs> <coughs> Bump. She suddenly presses her body up against mine. Hey, Shiki. That night, what you were talking about with Ciel, your feelings haven't changed? She looks up imploringly at me as she asks. My feeling is that night. What do you mean? How about you saying you loved me? <clears throat> I start to splutter. <laughs> it's too embarrassing for, it to me, for her to ask me this question when she's this close to me. God. You shouldn't eavesdrop, Arkwood. <laughs> I can't help it if I ever heard. Anyway, come on, answer me. Your words that night, they haven't changed? Idiot. I don't even need to say that. Yeah, they haven't changed. Can't make any guarantees. They'll probably never change. I'm so embarrassed to look up at the sky and answer. Arkwood wraps her arms around mine. Oh. Then you should prepare yourself, Shiki. Prepare? Prepare for what? I can't help but let a tinge of uneasiness creep in my voice. She holds onto my arms and speaks with a smile. Because you promised to be with me forever. Didn't I say so when we first met? I'll have you take responsibility for me. Then she starts to walk, still holding onto my arm. She's as energetic as a little child. Don't no. Stop. Stop. What's with this game? And okay. Urging me to hurry up to get to a playground. Oh, I see. Certainly, I would have to prepare. Speaking of no one in particular, and start to walk with her. I head towards some random place, going against the flow of students going to school. All the dudes are like, "Is it? Is that? Is that Tono?" What's he doing with that half one girl? What? <laughs> Where to? Well, there's no place we can't go. Sunlight really sees this princess of the moon accompanying me. The weather is a perfect blue sky. Hand in hand, we walk towards a new beginning for the two of us. Nice. Much better, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know what what's with Nasu with making <clears throat> the true ends for things, uh, the sad ones. Uh, but well, aside from Heaven's Feel, I guess Heaven's Feel, the true end is the good one, kind of, sort of. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 it, it, that, that definitely is. Bro, heavens feel good, or not even good. Heavens feel normal end. <laughs> of course, the UW true end is sad. <laughs> There's no saber. What do you, what, what you mean? The I I in my opinion the UBW good end the re, the, the good the good end is the ideal ending for any uh, any Fate Stay Night universe. Hands down. Cause and this could be canon for me. And this is, this is my head canon. They just have threesomes all the time. That's that's my head canon for for the UBW good end. <laughs> that you know and yeah sure Sakura gets chipped and there's no right but you know anything with Saber I'll take over I mean I love Ryder Ryder's great fantastic top three easily but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know how it is, because I mean, well, no, I guess the heavens feel good end, or sorry, true end, I suppose it's possible that they're Nah, nah, it's probably just him and Sakura. I think Spider just supports them. But with the Shiro Saber Rin, I could I could see Rin being okay with, you know, you, you, you know. But, yeah, anyway. Um. Yeah. Not as kiss as the manga ending the end. Okay, yeah. I want to have I I still don't uh because there's an, I don't think there's any way I can do any content around other than like maybe giving my thoughts in video format after I read it, but there, uh, there's there's no way I can Yeah, I just I, I just don't think there's any way I can do like any like manga you know, reading videos? Just I don't think it just wouldn't work. Ah, oh, CL Sensei. Yeah, let's 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 see what CL Sensei has to say. It just yeah. <clears throat> you reached Arquid's good ending. Well done. Each heroine when I set uh, is still be the same thing. With you. Oh, and another thing. If you have saved any of you, cleared at least one heroine. It may be a good idea to restart from the first day. You may have more choices than before. Until I read the manga for now, good ending over true ending. <laughs> so that's 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 all that's the all that's all the opinion I had. I don't know. The true ending felt very uh not good. I I was I honestly wasn't a fan of it at all. If I'm being really honest, it was uh unsatisfactory. Kind of. Kind of destroys everything it felt like the route was leading up to, to be honest. 
Like, it was building up the relationship and... Kinda, like, him bringing her out of, like, that, that, that mindset. And then, boom, no, she's gone. And it just, like... It kind of, I feel like, it felt like it destroyed the whole point of building their relationship. And it was just like, why? Like, I guess I understand the reasoning given, but not, it just feels like, I don't know. I just it wasn't. kind of felt yeah no I guess I guess I can't I guess all I can, yeah all I can say is it just felt like it subverted what the whole point of the like story and route was that's all that's all I can really give it was just like yeah, so you know this whole this whole thing you're building up to with these characters. Yeah, no, uh, we're throwing it out the window. Uh like, like what? Um, it just wasn't. good translation of the remake comes soon because I would very much be interested to see if they change it if they changed how the ending is and if you if you and if you know if it's different don't tell me I don't want to know because I, I want to you know. hold on I hope that we'll get a translation eventually but we'll see I guess, but <laughs> I just, I, uh, I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. Same, same. I. I'm very interested in. Because I assume we'll get more detail about Shiki's actual past and like Akiha's route. I would assume. So that'll be interesting. I don't know. It'll, it'll be cool to see all the. Uh, all the. All the. All the different perspectives we'll probably get to see. Through each route, but yeah. Anyway, uh, but <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, it was interesting. I wasn't. I didn't really add much in terms of com commentary today, other than like s me speculating stuff. So, sorry if it's a little bit boring, but anyway, it was it was it was it was fun. Much much happier that I got to see the good ending, because yeah, like I said, the true ending was not not my cup of tea. But yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for hanging out, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. <coughs> Peace.